Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to, finally, my January wrap-up. Yeah, I'm so sorry for how long it's taken me to film this. It is uh, early March. And I need to film my January wrap-up and my February wrap-up. So those will be coming, well, my February wrap-up will be coming shortly after this. Don't you worry. But I read quite a few books in January. I read 17 books. That's a lot, even for me. It's a lot of books. So I think it was a little daunting to film this video because that was a lot of books. So I'm obviously going to give my reviews of these books. I might make them a little quick or quite concise and to the point just because I don't want this to be a 40 minute long video. I don't think my technology can handle that. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the reviews. <laughs> so the first book I will talk about was Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This I really wanted to read in winter. The silvery cover gave me like strong winter vibes. It's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. There were a lot of different elements in this book and like eventually they all came together but I did get kind of lost at some points but overall I was much happier with it than I was Uprooted by Naomi Novik and so because of that I gave it four out of five stars. I think it was a great winter like fairy tale retelling. Very unique perspective on it. I I just loved that they were people who were in charge of loans and giving out money. That's just not something that outside of the Rumpelstiltskin fairy tale that people deal with too much in these fantasy books. So I, I enjoyed this, you know, it, and again, coming off of Uprooted, I had such high hopes for Uprooted and it really disappointed me. So I was much happier with, with this book. So four out of five stars, I would recommend. And then I read Saint by Adrienne Young. This is the, like, not really prequel, but like for the fable duology, this follows the main character's father and his story. Five out of five stars. I love everything in this world. Everything this author has come out with has been amazing in this world. And Saint was nothing short of that. It was exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, maybe I was hoping for a little more morally gray and saint, but you know, whatever. Um, it was such a great background to have on his character and it makes me want to reread everything now that we have this background on saint so that I can truly understand him in the duology. But so good, so good. Third book I read was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This I gave three out of five stars. It... It was interesting because it, it had a fairly good twist. I will say if you liked, I don't want to spoil it, but there's another thriller that had a very similar twist. And so I think if you liked that book, then you would like this one. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. So just be warned that if you don't want to know what book this is similar to, skip ahead like five seconds. Uh, but the book is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. But basically this book follows a husband and wife who are kind of falling out of love with each other and they're struggling in their relationship. So they decide to go on a weekend away in Scotland to try and repair their relationship, give it its last final push of, is this gonna work? It was a recommendation from their therapist. And some spooky things start happening in this old, church turned Airbnb in Scotland. So yeah, I, three out of five stars. Like it was okay. I really wasn't interested in it in the beginning. The spooky things were not spooky enough in my opinion. Like it wouldn't have been things that would freak me out. But like the ending, I, I admire the twist and what the author tried to do. And so that's why I'd say it was a three out of five. And I can see why some people really loved this book, but I can also see why some people really didn't care for it. Then I read an entire trilogy, first to third book, and that is The Bear and the Nightingale trilogy by Catherine Arden. So the first book is The Bear and the Nightingale, second book is The Girl in the Tower, and the third book is The Winter of the Witch. So these are based in Russian folklore. And here's the thing, I gave 
each of these books four out of five stars, but for different reasons. So the Bear and the Nightingale, it started off with a story from Russian folklore and I loved it and I loved the storytelling. I kind of felt like though as the book went on, I was kind of waiting for it to get back to that and just kind of waiting for it to fall out of like love politics a little bit. But I really admire our main character because she really didn't want, it's not even that in the first book she didn't want to get married, it was that she didn't want to just get married off. And I mean, the storytelling is a little slow and that is probably a choice that was made by the author and so it was something that didn't click with me but that's because of personal preference but you know it was still really good i still really admired the story itself and the ties to russian folklore now the second book was quite different so the second book went from your small little town to moscow and it just it had a very different turn to it and i love how our character grew and changed in this book and i really admire the new elements that were tied into this with her sisters and her family and kind of this is when like the big i feel like the trilogy plot really started to amp up in this one like the the first book was very introductory learning the characters getting the background on everything this is where you're like okay these are the issues these are the problems happening with it main character becomes a badass it's wonderful and then the third book obviously wraps it all up and it does a great job of returning to the russian folklore that this series was always rooted in and so i really admire how it all wrapped everything up together and the ending i mean it's not just your typical they lived happily ever after ending but it's not like a bad ending it's not where the characters are unhappy or anything like that but it was definitely an interesting an interesting one and so if you if you like folklore and you're okay with a bit of slower storytelling definitely check out this trilogy like i said each book was four out of five stars after that i read a book that just about made me ball i was listening to the audiobook for this at work and i listened to it <sighs> My mom read this book and she loved it and I knew of other people who have read this book and loved it and then I was gifted this book um, as part uh, as a um, like I won one of the Instagram giveaways so I was like okay I really do need to read this book and it just made me fall and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna so this book it's a little bit of a chunkier historical fiction which is why I was like kind of putting it off but I really flew through it once I got into the story because this follows two sisters who it's, you know, during World War, but they are in France and it's when like uh, Germany comes and the Nazis come and occupy it. And you follow um, these sisters who don't really have the best relationships starting off, but that's because of complicated relationships with their father because their mother died anyway. So one sister is super like, rebellious, rambunctious, wants to like fight back and so she does some incredible things in this book and then her older sister has a family and her husband is enlisted to fight against Germany and how and then a soldier, a German soldier actually takes up occupancy in her home as he is stationed there and so it's her way of, it's her, it's her fight and but you have both sisters who are fighting for their rights and for the rights of the Jewish communities in France and kind of everyone who's going against Germany at this time. And they have, like I said, they have two very different fights, but they're very strong and very important. Oh my gosh, like, it's insane. Like, Obviously, the rebellious sister is really cool and a badass, and I loved reading about what she did, but I personally loved the older sister who uh, had her fight at home. She made me cry and just, oh my goodness. So this, I believe, was a five-star book, yeah? Yeah, this was a five-star read. I, It makes me 
both want to read more from Chris and Hannah, but also too scared to read from Chris and Hannah, because I think they do the tearjerker um, historical fiction really well. Again, my mom read, I think, The Great Expanse, and she really loved it, and they're, they have a couple other books, and I'm just like, I think I need some time in between this one and another book to emotionally repair myself and to prepare for what could happen in those books, because, jeez. Moving on to a very different genre. So in December, I had read Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. And then in January, I read Kingdom of the Curse and Kingdom of the Feared. I see the turn it took there. <laughs> so this first book, as I said in December, was amazing. It was five out of five stars. Um, very great YA book. Uh, you're following twin sisters and one twin is murdered and so the other sister uh, wants to find out who murdered her twin and so she ends up summoning a demon to help her but that demon turns out being the Prince of Wrath, one of the seven princes of hell. And the second and third book are, I swear, they are no longer YA. They are adult, as adult can be. Half of it was just pure demon smut. Yes, I loved it. It was amazing. So I would say Kingdom of the Cursed was 5 out of 5 stars, but Kingdom of the Feared was 4.5 out of 5 stars. I don't want to ruin the trilogy for anyone who hasn't read it, but I will say Kingdom of the Feared would have been so perfect had it not just blown up so much, I think. But at the same time, I admire... I've been saying admire a lot in this video. But I like how the author took the risk and kind of did a nod back to like explosive fantasies where you, you start off like this, start off like this, and then by the end of the book it's like, whoo! <sighs> but I think it could have used a bigger and better, I think it could have crescendoed more in the second book. Because yeah, the second book, I, I, I like, like I said, five out of five stars, I absolutely loved it. But then having read the third book after that, I wish the second book could have crescendoed a little bit more so that the third book didn't seem so jarring. But seriously, highly recommend this series. Oh my word. I will be talking about this and thinking about this a lot. Then I read Monsters Born and Made and this is by Ten V Berois and this was three out of five stars. This is kind of loosely based off of uh, South Asian folklore a little bit, but it's very dystopian. I think what I mostly did not like about this book was just how Hunger Games it read to me. So we are following our main character who her family captures these creatures and then breeds them and raises them to be used for this big dangerous game that the elite upper class participates in. However, our main character's younger sister is sick and they are running out of money and they cannot afford the medication that her sister needs. So she decides that even though she is from the lower class people, she's going to enter in the race to save her sister. You kind of see where the Hunger Game elements are already, which like would be fine, but just the way I was reading through it just seemed so similar to Hunger Games but not in a way that I think was either unique enough or I want to say good enough, but like it didn't impress me as much as I was hoping it would. It just, things just kind of happened and they kept going. I didn't really feel for the characters all that much. Like, like saying the summary, I feel like I should have had more of an attachment to our main character and like her sister, but I really didn't. Like she didn't have a relationship with her sister very much and she didn't she just never really won me over as someone that I really cared about and so then all the things happening I was like mm, yeah okay but her relationship with the creatures was interesting I wish there was more there but yeah I just found this to be lacking in certain major areas but it was still three out of five stars like it would still say this was pretty good like if you really liked Hunger Games give this a try and let me know how how you think of it knowing that knowing the summary and everything I will say though this book naked is pretty cute this is a pretty good naked book I 
I can't, I also do really like the cover though, so I can't decide if I want to keep it on or keep it naked on my shelf. But it just doesn't seem, it seems fantasy that was inspired by folklore, so I don't know if I want to put it on my like folklore mythology shelf or just a fantasy shelf. Like, I don't know. I think I was just disappointed on how little folklore was in it when it just seems like there would be more. The Stolen Air by Holly Black. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. I wanted this edition because the regular one is white, but The Cruel Prince and How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories is white, so I wanted to give Holly Black some difference and get, a, and get the black one. This, so if you haven't read the Cruel Prince trilogy, you really should before reading this because this follows a character in that trilogy later on. It follows, well, okay, it doesn't follow Oak, but he is one of the main characters. It follows, it's from the point of view of someone else, but like Oak is in that inner circle and is like the love interest and everything like that. So you need to read the initial trilogy in order to read this. Um, but I give it four out of five stars, you know? I love the world building that Holly Black does and I love her characters and I really love the Cruel Prince trilogy. I just feel like this one, I like Oak. I like Oak a lot and I like her main character but it just felt like it was missing that Holly Black spark. It felt like I just wanted a little bit more like clarity and in-depthness from it because we're in a new element of the world that she has created, you know, like it still has to do with like the human world and the Fey realm, but I don't know. I just, I just wanted a little bit more from it, but still I loved it and I cannot wait for the next one. I will probably have to reread this one before reading the next one though, just cause I do not remember much. So yeah, I just felt like it wasn't super memorable other than just like, yeah, they went and played, they talked to a person, they did some stuff. Next up, I read Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Cozy fantasy. Five out of five stars. You follow an orc who has quit adventuring to open up a coffee shop. And this is the cutest, most endearing, cozy fantasy. And like, I'm a nerd. I, I love playing D&D. But even if you aren't a big D&D person, still give this a try because if you, it's, it's basically a fantasy love letter to coffee and it just made me so happy. I immediately made my partner read it and then they immediately loved it. So there's nothing more I can say about this. I feel like that hasn't already been said. I just, I love the characters. I love the backdrop. Conflicts were done really well. I just, I cannot wait for the, the next one that's like a, a bookstore, you know? It's just gonna continue to be cozy and happy. Then I read a book based off of Chinese mythology. It is called Strike the Zither. It is the first book in a duology. And this was pretty good. I, I rated it 3.5 out of five stars. Like it was just a little, it's just a little better than average. But I keep going back and forth about reading the second book just I don't know so you're following a main character who's like a war strategist and she is on one person's side of like ruling the land but it's under an emperor I have a really hard time explaining this kind of like a warlord type situation and a lot happened in this book like at first I thought it was slow but then it really picked up and a lot happened in this book and the strategies were really interesting. I'm not really one for like war strategy. That is not something I typically care about, but I was just barely kept entertained enough to keep going in the book. So I'm not super sure about the duology. I'll probably read it if I have a lull in my reading and it's available, but like it was beautifully steeped in Chinese mythology. Like it really came clear in the end where the influences were and that's why I feel like I might still enjoy the second book because that's what I enjoy in folklore books. I enjoy the mythology of it. So 
yeah, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say. Believe it or not, I read a Christmas book. So, okay, remember this is the January wrap up. Even though it's being posted in March, this is the January wrap up. There was one Christmas book that I really wanted to read in December and just, I just did not get to it. I mean, I started it, but I just didn't get to finish it. And I was like, you know what? Christmas may be over, it may be the new year, but I don't wanna finish this book because I was very much enjoying it. That was a Cat Cafe Christmas by Cody Geary. But I'm glad I finished it because this was a four out of five star. I loved this. It was cute. It was cozy. The romance was good. It followed the typical like pattern of contemporary holiday romance, but whatever. The cats were adorable. It, there was a lot going on in the book. Well, I mean, not even just a lot going on, but like there were elements that were important and that were major in the book that were fine. I just wish it had been a little more intertwined in the cat cafe specifically, but it was a cute romance. I liked, I, I liked the romance a lot because it was kind of enemies to lovers, but done differently. Like they got off on the wrong foot and then they turned into like a teasing friendly banter, but like, I don't like you, but you're helping me. And they would banter until they became friends and then became lovers. So I, I liked that swing. I, I very much liked that swing. And again, the cats were adorable. So glad I finally finished that book. Then I read Book of Night by Holly Black. Book of Night, I also gave four out of five stars. This was like a really good reading month. I did not have any like bad books. There was nothing below a three star in this month, which was pretty cool. Book of Night, different book for Holly Black. It's her first adult novel, I believe, and it does not take place in the Cruel Prince world, which is just fine. This book has to do a lot more with shadows. It's the idea that you can alter your shadow and then that kind of affects you, but mostly your shadow. It kind of took a little bit to understand and get into, but I liked it. I, I mean, that's such a cool concept, right? Alter your shadow, like give your shadow wings or a tail. I'm fascinated. I want to dig deeper into that. I wish we had gotten more build off of that in the first book, but there will be more. And so I will read more. I've got two more books for this month and both of them are middle grade. So I read The Other Side of Luck by Ginger Johnson. This was a 3.5 out of five stars. You know, it, kind of, it gave me a couple of different like fairy tale vibes, but it wasn't specifically based off of anything, but like the how the summary made it sound versus like kind of what happened didn't really match up as much as I was expecting. But basically you have like the princess whose father issues a challenge to find this super rare and super beautiful flower. And then you've got this like kind of poor boy who goes on that challenge and then both the princess and this boy are going to the challenge and then they team up and you know blah 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 it, it's middle grade it was fine i i liked the direction it took but the summary was misleading which was kind of a bummer and so that really threw me off and it really threw off my expectations going into the book um but yeah i just i feel like there was so much potential this book could have been and it just missed the mark. Like, I just got confused because I was like, I thought this story was this and I thought this was the purpose of it. And like at the beginning, this was the purpose of it. But then by the end, it was like, no. <laughs> so 3.5, meh, meh. The final book, the final book that I read in January was Dust and Grim. And this was by Chuck Wendig. This is a very different middle grade than the one I just read. This is a good like spooky season middle grade. So you've got this brother and sister who were separated and the brother doesn't actually know that he has a sister until she comes and is like, hey, I want part of our inheritance, which is like this huge house and the business. And the brother's like, huh? Cause he's 18 and their parents have died and 
he just inherited everything. He's continuing on the business, but then all of a sudden this girl comes along and is like, hey, I'm your sister. Um, I have been declared a, uh, like she's been emancipated. She got away from their abusive father while the brother got to live with their better mother. And so she basically has been living on her own. She's been acting like an adult. And so she wants part of the family inheritance and everything like that. And to kind of reestablish that business and everything. Except what she doesn't know is that their like mortuary business is a lot more than what she knew. And it's spooky, it's dark, the sibling relationship is could have been better. But again, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Like this one, I don't know why, I think it was better. It just hit me wrong in some points. It was, it was a little weird in some areas. And I was like, mm, almost. And then the ending was, it, it, it was an ending. We'll just say that. So it's a standalone, but like, I wanted more of the uniqueness of the book. But I would still recommend this. I still think this was a great, fast-paced, spooky, middle grade read. Woo, so those were all 17 books that I read in January. I will say I'm pretty proud of the amount of like series because I started series, but then I read the entirety of it or I finished it. Except for the series that I started and didn't finish. But whatever. Those are the 17 books. I hope you like this video. Comment down below if you've read any of these books. I would love to hear your thoughts and discuss them with you in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. I try and post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. And like I said, the February wrap-up will be coming soon. And that'll be another fairly sizable wrap-up. So if you enjoyed this, subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified when it posts probably like next week. But yeah, otherwise I have bookish social media linked down below where I post what I'm reading, what I'm thinking about it. So you should definitely follow me there. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.